This is Michael Devolano from Pucks and Dreams, and this is my preview of the Colorado Avalanche for the 2019-2020 season. Looking back on the season, it was a pretty successful one for Colorado. They made a pretty impressive improvement over the previous year where they, there's a lot of P's in that, uh, they had finished last in the NHL. Jared Bednar, who was a first-year coach, could have been easily removed and said uh, kudos to Joe Sackick for having the foresight to, and the patience to stick with him. Um, as they definitely turned around and earned a playoff berth and then had a very, I think, impressive playoff run. Um, in the offseason, Colorado has been aggressive in making some changes. The one point that's not on here is the, the signing long-term of Miko Rantanen. Um, so that was that's probably a pretty important as he's emerged as a real star for this team. Uh, they were also aggressive in making changes where they did not re-sign Sergei Barlamov or Simeon Barlamov, sorry, who went to the New York Islanders, replacing Robin Leonard. Uh, they also saw the exit of longtime and rumored to be traded defenseman Tyson Berry, who is a really talented offensive defenseman, smaller guy, prototypical of one of these mobile puck-moving defensemen that can jump up in the rush. Um, they felt comfortable moving on from him because of the emergence of Kale McCarr, who stepped into the playoffs and was terrific. Um, Alexander Kerfoot also leaves and goes to Toronto. Carl Soderberg uh, left as a free, as a trade, I believe, actually. I'll have to look up who he went to, but I thought it was the Islanders. Let's see if I'm, I'm mistaken. Uh, I talked about this. Arizona, I'm sorry. Moved to Arizona, but he did score 23 goals, so he really did have a good return on what was initially looking like a really bad free agent signing. They bring in Nazem Kadri, who left Toronto under a bit of a cloud due to his undisciplined play yet again in the playoffs that many saw as costing Toronto a series against Boston. Whether that's the case or not, um, you know, it's, up, it's a little bit subjective. Uh, they bring in Don Skoy from uh, San Jose, who I was actually surprised to let, let him go. He's a pretty effective two-way player and can contribute offensively. And again, they're really seeing this as the beginning of the Kale McCarr uh, era as he steps in as probably their number one defenseman and definitely their number one offensive defenseman. Just taking a look last year, so I guess, you know, one thing is for sure, a lot of goals from the top three. This is probably one of the best lines in hockey. Nathan McKinnon continues to step up as one of the top 10 or 12 players, I think, in the NHL. Um, might even be top six if I look at it. I have to kind of rank them at one point. But I always thought this guy was going to pop through. It just looked like for a long time he was doing things at top speed and it didn't always translate. But the last two seasons of plus 90 points have been really great. Uh, Miko Rantanen is a big part of that, I think. Big, lanky right winger, kind of power forward. But not he's not really physical. But, man, he's got reach and talent and hockey sense. And I think together they boosted up the per- – production of Gabriel Landeskog, who was also, you know, the captain was um, often talked about being traded. So good thing they didn't do that because he's shown that if you play him with good players, he is still a leader on this team. He's still young enough. He can contribute offensively at a rate that probably um, many thought he wasn't going to get to. Losing Tyson Berry subtracts some points, so they're really going to count on Cal McCarr to kind of fill that in. Soderberg, I don't necessarily think it was super important on the ice. He's getting older. 23 goals may have been a surprise last year and an overachievement. Should be, that offense should be replaced by Nazem Kadri. He could do more, but I don't think so. They also brought in Andre Burakovsky, whose production I think will be roughly similar to Alexander Kerfoot, although Kerfoot centered that third line more than anything, and sometimes the second line. Uh, Colin Wilson... Not counting on him for much, but um, you know, could still be an effective offensive player. Um, Samuel Garrard is really an excellent top three or four defenseman on this team. Calvert's a gritty two-way player, can contribute a little bit of offense. Eric Johnson, it didn't look like he was going to start the season, but I think he's he's in. Uh, Ian Cole for sure is out for a while. But so if you look at this, they you know they lost some some players. Maybe the one player that they also lost that was under the radar was the loss of Patrick Nemeth, who actually recorded some pretty um, useful minutes for them. 
big mobile defenseman. He went to Detroit, signed as a free agent by Stevie Iserman, and he looks actually pretty good in Detroit. So where do we project them? They had 38 wins last year. I think that you know you take a little bit of offense off of Landis Gog because I don't know if you can count on him sticking on 34 goals. McKinnon, 34 is safe, and I think Rantanen's 34 is safe. I think McKinnon has the potential to do whatever he wants. So he he could break out again and be a, a, a plus 100 point, plus 40 goal player. That's definitely in the cards. Um, again, I think Kadri replaces Soderberg's offense. Burakovsky replaces what's lost from Kerfoot. Uh, Donskoy is a pretty effective offensive player, good 200-foot player, could play second or third line. Nieto continues to be you know, a quick, reasonable con- contributor offensively. Uh, Tyson Jost has just never break broke through and become the player that a lot of us projected. I don't know if that changes this season. Does he become the 20, 25 goal guy you would think he should be? Or is he going to stay kind of in that 11 to 15? I think you count on 11. Uh, one footnote here is JT Comfer. If he's in the lineup, this is a, you know, he just boosts things up. He, JT Comfer can probably have some upside offensively he's starting the season i think on the ir or has just recently gone on the ir colin wilson you still count on for 11 or 12 goals should score more but doesn't i just think he just never reached again the heights that we thought and i think a lot of that's because of the speed of the game uh, they signed valerie nichushkin i don't really hold out much hope for this guy at one point i thought he was going to be a real dynamite player he had uh, zero goals last year for dallas upon returning from the khl I think he's probably destined to go back to the KHL. I don't understand what happened with this guy. He had a phenomenal rookie year, um, had some injuries, came back, and just never has gotten his groove back in the NHL. Went to the KHL for a while in a contract dispute. Uh, Pierre Edward Bellamar is a really, really gritty two way player, um, good on faceoffs, should be a positive addition to this team, and Matt Calvert brings it every shift. You look at the D, um, you know, I think Eric Johnson is actually going to start the season on the roster, which is good because it wasn't projected that he would do that. Ian Cole is out for a while. When he's back in, he'll definitely help. Kale McCarr, probably their top offensive defenseman. Samuel Carrard can contribute a little bit offensively. Zadorov is just a big, imposing defenseman. Not necessarily a lot of offense there or creativity, but he's mean and he's a good defenseman. Top four is realistic for him. Uh, they'll have some fill-in minutes from guys like Graves and Barbario until a Cole comes back. In net, this is probably where there's optimism, but maybe a little question mark as Grubauer takes over. His numbers look better last year overall um, per game, like goals against average and save percentage than Barlamov. I think he's probably more than capable of playing 60 games. And Pavel Frankuz might be a little bit of an asterisk, but he looks real good. And I think if you count on them as 218 goals against that it might be lower uh, but i think that's safe and you know here i'm i think i'm actually at uh, 249 even though it says 236 i forgot to add in comfort but so this would say to me this is a 40 43 win type team they should be back in the playoffs improving upon last year's numbers um, and they should be competitive and they showed in the playoffs that they are very capable of going on a run. So I, th- I think this is an up-and-coming team. There are some question marks. But overall, I think I like the moves that were made. There's there's always some question marks, but that top line is so good. Makari's got a really bright future. And you've got to like what's going on with Group Bauer. And in the draft, you know, they got a pretty good player. Let's see. You know, there's the big fear... <laughs> that uh you know they traded matt duchene and the one thing they got was ottawa's first pick and that looked like a complete disaster in the making um but you know they didn't because of the lottery it worked out for ottawa but it still worked out i would say for um for colorado is they let me think of who they picked up so they had kirby doc and who is after doc my god my brain anyways they had a good draft (laughs) i'm blanking on who who they got but they picked up a pretty good player so i think overall this team's in real good shape i think they've got a bright future 
and they should be in the playoffs. They might finish like kind of five, six this year. I think they'll be up in the West a little bit, although it's very, very competitive, of course. Yeah, of course. Sorry. <laughs> Blanking out, but Bo Byram was a phenomenal pick at number four. They actually, um, it looked like they were going to keep him. He had a really good rookie camp, I thought. Um, and he had a, a good training camp, apparently, but they decided to send him back to junior anyhow. But he's definitely in, in their future. Martin Kaut is a guy that might come up during the season. He was their previous draft pick. He's big. He's got some offensive skill. I guess we'll see what his offensive production is. I'm not sure if he goes hard to the net, but he, he's a big skilled guy, and he might you know start breaking him into the lineup. I don't think he'll have any impact right now, but... Um, they've got some, you know, players in the future. Alex Newhook was another guy um, slated for Boston College. That Boston College team looks interesting, by the way. But he um, he's a real talented offensive player. So they've got more in the pipeline. This should be a good team for a long time, and I think that they're going to keep taking steps forward. And, uh, you know, kudos to Joe Sackick for not panicking and keeping assets and acquiring a few more.